Hey everyone, our brand new book has landed. Hendo, 10 years a red premium collector's edition, the definitive Jordan Henderson collection in A4 size, 200 pages, full color, incredible insight, in-depth knowledge, and the stories of his rise from a young boy in Sunderland all the way through their academy to the Premier League taking the captain's armband, becoming the captain, and leading Liverpool to be champions of everything and beyond as well. It's got his greatest moments season on season, some incredible, unique, phenomenal custom artwork from some of the best Liverpool artists on the scene, incredible high-definition photos of his best moments as well. It is an incredible Jordan Henderson collection, and it fits right in your hands, just about. It is a behemoth of a book, it is incredible, and it is available right now. You can get it and you can learn more about the Liverpool skipper from the people who are closest to him on that journey. Friends, family, coaches, players and managers. Yes, it is Hendo, 10 years of red and it is available right now on redmenmerch.com. Get involved. Hello everyone, welcome to Transfer Insight Live. I am Paul Machen, Neil Jones of Goal.com joins me for the slim pickings that is Liverpool's transfer <laughs> news at the moment. Um, there are plenty of things to talk about, we will get through them um, in due course of course and if you want to ask any questions of Neil or myself then do so and we'll get through them at the end of this stream. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about Bournemouth winger Arnold Danjuma in a little bit and another couple of people that have been linked tenuously but there's been a ton of contract stuff, let's get that done um, and, and I don't want to I don't want to yada yada over transfer uh, over over contract stuff because I think that's a bit it's a very modern football fan to do that. Yeah. Um we'll start with Allison, which is obviously the most recent one. Um twenty twenty seven mm. for the goalie. I am. Um, it's just boss. Like you know, we <laughs> yeah. and this yeah. is the one thing. Cut. We'll, well, yeah, no. <laughs> like literally, because like, I we'll do we're gonna do for we'll do Fabinho in a minute. We're gonna do Trent over on extra on the website. But the goalkeeper stuff in particular for me has always resonated with me. Having been a goalkeeper and having forensically analysed every Liverpool goalkeeper for all time. We don't have good goalkeepers very often, yeah. and this gets forgotten yeah. quite easily sometimes. The fact that you know people still go on about Ray Clements, yeah, yeah. it was a very long time ago that Ray yeah. Clements played for Liverpool. Pepe Reina was pretty good; he was the closest thing we'd had to a decent goalie in the pre pretty much in the Premier League era. Yeah. Um, twenty twenty seven, that is just brilliant. It just boxes yeah. you off. It's such a we don't need to worry about goalkeepers for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely, and it's you know it, it also given that it's not a. It's not a homegrown goalkeeper, or you know, it's, it's an English goalkeeper. It's a goalkeeper who, in the past, we've seen players, Brazilian players, who their dream is to play for Real Madrid or Barcelona or whatever it may be. And no, it's Allison. I thought his quotes were pretty telling that he said his family love her here, and he, you know, happy wife, happy life. I think he used that 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 <laughs> phrase, didn't he? And he, um, he's clearly clearly loving it. Fabinho the same, and certainly happy wife, happy life. You can tell from his his wife's um, his hair. Uh, uh, social media game was strong, pretty strong, game. strong, absolutely. But um, I think it's it is good. I mean, it, it's sort of a three part of Liverpool's planning, isn't it? You know, there's there's three strands to it. There's the the negotiations of of the renegotiations of of contracts. There's the younger players being brought through and hopefully coming through to become big players. And then obviously there's the transfers, which is what everyone's here for. But um, I think at least. At least one of those looks like it's going pretty well. I mean, I know there's the Henderson issue, which may rear its head again in the future, but you're looking at Alisson, Fabinho, Trent, probably Robertson, Van Dijk, Salah. I think that's six big renewals, hopefully in the in the space of a few months. And that shows you where Liverpool are planning for the next few years and the next six in um, in Alisson's case. It's tough, isn't it? Because for, for, and I, I get I get people's like lack of excitement over it, and I think you know because because let's be honest, it's not. Signing new contracts is not a sexy thing. It's just, no. a, but it, but it, in terms of all this Liverpool side's built, this side is built on making sure that the best players stay around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do, I do, I do think this sometimes how we underestimate the value of that. Yeah, like it's been forgotten that we've. It's not that long. We've had, I think we've had three summers on the bounce now where we've had no yeah, real yeah. negative transfers yeah, yeah. hovering, looming yeah. over us. Where you're like, oh my god, we're gonna lose yeah. X, Y, and Z. And the reason that hasn't happened is is twofold. It's because the guys have got really, really good contracts. They're really happy, and we've become a successful football team. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, you think of. You're right. It's moved. The, the discussions move from, can we hold on to Torres, Alonso, Gerard? Coutinho, Suarez, whoever, 
to can we can we sell can we actually choose to sell them and yeah. and, and look to that and that's probably where the discussions are like with people like Firmino and Mane and maybe even Salah in in the next you know year or two. Um, I don't agree with that, but but yeah. I think it's a fair it's a fair debate to be had. Um, that's changed around Liverpool, and you look at that the work that they did, and I, I was talking to, to, on a on a, a goal uh, show that we did. That that three year spell that Liverpool had, um, twenty sixteen to twenty eighteen, and the, the amount of work that went in, both in terms of signings, but also in terms of renewals, and you're looking at now this is the, this is the second batch of those renewals really is what are, are coming up with with you know so many players in twenty eighteen nineteen season signed big contracts and you know were rewarded, and now you're getting the second batch of those, and obviously some of them may well, may well not get that. We, no, we'll, we'll wait and see on that. I think Firmino might be the one who's probably the the most at danger, if you like, of yeah. not of not sort of being given a, a, a huge five year contract. But um yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of work went into that period and I think there'll be a lot of work going into probably this period and, and the next couple of years as well because there will be a need to freshen things up. As I said, the second the the, the second part of the, the strategy and i.e. the buying and the, the, the build of the side, that's probably the area that needs the most the most work and they've, they've taken a good step with Canate hopefully maybe if he becomes a good player good age they need a few more of those in the coming years Well, because this is the thing isn't it and, and it's, it's whether you, it's whether you care to follow it and I do because I think it's you've, it's, it's important to have a full picture of things because you set your expectations if you set your expectations against unrealistic yeah. you know parameters and I do it, don't even in, in business terms Renewing contracts is not is not what you want to be doing. You want to be focusing on yeah. what you do next and how you continue. But it's all well and good that if Liverpool go out and go, right, okay, well, we're going to go and spend £100 million on someone. And then Mo Salah goes, what about my contract renewal? Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. well, we actually can't afford to renew yeah, your contract because yeah, yeah, we've yeah. just spent that money on, yeah, on someone. Absolutely. Then all of a sudden, when Mo Salah's halved his valuation next summer and is upset because you've not tied him down yeah. and feels a little unsettled. You know, you, you mentioned the Steven Gerrard situation. That was a, the only reason Steven Gerrard stayed is because effectively, like, he, oh, he was a scouser, yeah. and there were a, there was a lot of pressure in the city on Steven yeah. Gerrard around that. Maybe some not particularly nice pressure as yeah. well, as well as all the the heroic. You know, I live from a football club. Players like Salah don't have that. Yeah, yeah, they, of course. And you know, I think that's what Liverpool have done quite well, though, in terms of their recruitment. Full stop. Is they they have recruited players that I can't think of too many really, and I. I, I certainly include Salah in, in this because I think there's a perception of Salah that he's sort of always looking over the garden fence a little bit and I don't think that's true at all but I think they, they've they they've been able to get players in who who, who A, see the potential of Liverpool you know you think of Mane was probably one of the first who really came in you know he came into a pretty average team Mane Firmino came to an even worse one really um, but they, they saw the potential obviously with, with Klopp in Mane's case um, and then we're willing to, to, to. I mean, Klopp used the phrase, didn't he? I think it was around the time Mane signed. He said, "We want people who are going to push the train, and uh, rather than people who are going to just jump on it." And yeah. they, they were willing to do that. But at the same time, this is the Mario Goethe stuff. Yeah, the Goethe, well, it was Goethe Mane, pretty much. I think was the was the, the comparison. He's he waiting to see if we secure Champions yeah, League. Yeah, that. Well, he said, if anyone comes into me and says, "I want to know if you're in the Champions League or not," I, I don't want to know, basically. And um, you got a lot of people who are willing to push the train, but I think you also got. People or it all while they were in the in the building, they've been quite good at convincing people that Do you know what, you know, maybe I'm going to push as hard as as, as you have in the past because we're already sort of going quite well. But at the same time, this is the best train to be on, and I think Liverpool have done that really well. I can't. I mean, I was I was Salah is a good example. Really, it was obviously the the stuff in uh, it was ass, wasn't it? Last December before the Michelin game where he, he gave an interview and. A lot of people told me, oh, he's, he's starting to flutter his eyelashes at Spain. And I wrote a piece then saying, I, I just don't see, I don't see what they offer him that Liverpool don't. I don't see, you know, maybe Man City, Chelsea, if, if you are, like, if you're literally that kind of sort of, I want to earn 500 grand a week and I want to win, I want to be guaranteed pretty much winning something every season, then okay, you might say, oh, go there. But really, I think, what are you, get, what are you getting anywhere else that you aren't getting at Liverpool at the moment? And uh, add on top of that, the things that you get that you don't get anywhere else, yeah. as in the adoration of the fans, the, the, the unique sort of games, you know, once fans are back in the stadiums, which, of course, we're all looking forward to that starting this weekend. But you get that unique experience probably with Liverpool, or certainly, you know, 
uh, an experience you don't get at many other clubs. Yeah, I mean, and, and that, that's that's what Liverpool have built, isn't it? You know, and the point is, is that Liverpool weren't that, and it's, it's telling us a few people talking about this, you know, Alisson, Fabinho, there's guys in the absolute prime of their yeah. career. Like, Alisson is, in my mind, the best goalkeeper yeah, in the world. And, that, and there'll be people who take umbrage and all that because we do, because we like to rank everything yeah. at all times. <laughs> and what I mean by that, to clarify, is that... There's a there's a top bracket, yeah, and so take your pick between Jan or Black, yeah, and yeah. take your pick. Probably, you know, Manuel Neuer certainly yeah. would have been in there at a point. David De Gea would have been in that in that bracket yeah. a few a few years ago. Certainly, I think Edison's definitely in Donald there as well. Potentially, yeah, exactly. You know, I, so for me, you know, there's no there's no better than yeah. you're gonna get out there. And any other club that doesn't own one of those players yeah, that we yeah. own will be looking around. You, going, you can't go and buy Allison now, yeah. or, or if you do, it, it is it is you know. Well, I mean, Alisson was a world record for for a week or so, but you, it is it is you know you are spending all your budget on a goalkeeper if you, if Alisson doesn't play for Liverpool or you or you completely you, you significantly downgrading into a Kevin Callagher or exactly. You know, yeah. And I think the Fabinho stuff is interesting because I don't think he's quite there, but he's not far off. Yeah. And I think it's, it's actually just in weird. It's weirdly an outside recognition. I think is what's what's limited Fabinho to some extent. And look, last season was a. Like it was for most people, it was a bit of a write-off of a whole yeah. campaign because of how he ended up being used. I don't think there's many better DMs in, on the oh, planet yeah, yeah. than him. But the fact that he doesn't quite get that recognition for Brazil probably hurts that in terms of yeah, perception yeah. a little bit. Yeah. But Liverpool know that they can't go out and get anyone better than him. Yeah. And again, what it just means there, you've shut the door again, he's dead happy, his, family, his family's happy. And... That means that if you want to come and buy for being, yo, we get to set that we set the asking price at whatever the hell we want to set. Yeah, them. and but also just just throw in, let's let's say um, who you compare them to in the Premier League. So you you're talking about DMs, but you're talking about look at Chelsea's three: Jorginho and Kante and Kovacic. Let's say let's Matic, McTominay, whoever at United, uh, Rodri, Fernandinho. Fernandinho is the only one out of those who. Crisis, crisis! You're going to have to play centre back. Yeah. Fabinho does. Fabinho is is a pretty high level centre back. Yeah. Mas, you know, not um, sorry. Play who, who plays in midfield. You know, which which is makes him pretty unique, really, and makes him really, really valuable for Liverpool. As seen last season, I mean, imagine what Liverpool would have been like if he if he wasn't able to play centre yeah. back. If he was five foot seven, yeah. and you know, or, or or whatever, you know, you would have been really, really sort of. Up against it even more so than Liverpool were, so he he's a much um, much valued member. I thought it would again tell him what he said in his contract, uh, sorry, his interview after signing the contract. I want to be a leader. I've worked on me talk, and I want to be a voice. I want to be sort of you know someone who, and I think that's another thing. I've spoken to people at Liverpool who say he's a great character as well. He's just a, a real sort of you know level level sort of temperament, really sort of a team player, and he, that comes across I think in in the way he plays, but also the way he, the way he is and conducts himself and. It's great, you know. It it is it is good, and I also think, and I know this is it's not really talked about. I also think if you can, if you've got Brazilians at your club and they are happy and they are speaking, you you that that word spreads, and we you see that on international duty. You you know you see that when when there's a player coming up and you know Liverpool are in the mix and you've got Fabinho and you've got Alisson there and you may maybe you've got Firmino as well, or you've got Spanish speaking Portuguese speaking players. You've got that message that you know come here. Well, look, yeah. there's Alison Becker, it, it, that's an, it, there's no real reason for him to, I mean, look, there's money, but yeah. like, what is it that, that, that makes him want to jump yeah. over from, from Roma? Look, Liverpool was certainly a club on the up, but that definitely helps that yeah. transition without, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt on that. And yeah, I, look, I think that's, I just think it's good. Um, the one question out of this, of course, is that I do wonder how much Liverpool would be publicising this yeah. if there were transfers going on. You know what I mean? If you had other yeah. things, would they be doing it now, or would they wait until the window was shut? Because I mean, and I, I do get that, and I mean, I made to my actually message me and said, "Why, why did them two on two separate days? Why didn't you just do the two Brazilians together?" I was like, well, they give, give content. them content. Hashtag yeah, content. Yeah, give them the moment. You know, <laughs> yeah. of course. You know, they don't. It would have been quite nice to do it of, of the two of them, but of, of you know, and I get that. But then that's, you know, that's there is a cynicism to that, isn't there? Like a real sort of, you know. People are never happy. Are you know? Pe- yeah. People are never happy. It's like, well, okay, like no one's ever happy. Do you want? Ever. Do you want? Do you want them to sort of to wait, or do you want that extra month where there's there's a story in the paper that a hey, Fabinho hasn't signed his contract yet, and he's suddenly he's been linked to Real Madrid, or you know, somewhat you know, that, look, that, the that, Henderson, the Henderson yeah, stuff's the perfect example of that. On, so, or do you want it just nipped in the bud? And you know, I think I think the word was at the start of the summer that these deals. I mean, Trent was probably accelerated a little bit. I thought Trent maybe 
I didn't expect it to happen as soon as it did. But Fabinho, Allison, Van Dijk, Salah, I think they the word was that they were always going to be moving on quite quickly once once they were back from pre season. So I mean Fabinho's was done what two days, I think you've been at the at the, the training camp, Allison three days. So I think it was literally just I am eight, how are you? Um, put, put, stick, stick, stick your bag down, get in there, we're gonna do you some bit some pitches. But I think yeah, I think it's it would be it's a fair though, point. Whether, it's a fair point. We'll, we'll never know. The we'll, fanfare, yeah, exactly. we'll we'll never know. But at the same time, you know, good news is good news, and these two these two deals and the Trent one are good news. It's that it's just that thing, isn't it? Where you 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 can you can easily see a world where this stuff. I don't know whether it. it, it yeah, whether it would just carry on in the background because it should we should should we but we should be because at the same time this is to your point we've got. Like we've just signed the best, I said, we've just signed the best goalie in the world down to a new contract, yeah. and he's made up and he's signed a long time because he because he's not going. It's like a, a two year extension, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it, with with eyes going, well, I'll get to thirty, yeah. and then I'll go and move, or or, move you, or you're thinking Liverpool are just sort of holding his value mm. with with an eye on getting rid of him in a year or two. Yeah, this is them looking. This is long term succession yeah. planning and going. We now don't have to worry about the goalkeeper. When we rebuild, yeah. when the rebuild happens in the next three or four seasons, the goalkeeper position is yeah. sound. That is just not a, a cause for concern for us in any way, shape, or form. And now we've done the same with the DM as well. And yeah. no, I think it's I think it's absolutely sound. Um, right, there's a couple of bits and pieces um, around this as well. You mentioned obviously the, the other list of players. The Salah stuff. Um, is there any surprise that that's not been like no. that? Wasn't the highest of high priorities to get that? No. Well, I, I mean, I don't. I don't think the fact that it's not done doesn't mean it, it wasn't a high priority. It might just be a more tricky contract to do, obviously, w- 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 whatever. I mean, one thing you say about Salah is he and his, his agent know, know his value very, very much, yeah. and, and rightly so, given given everything he's achieved for the club. I mean, you know, I was actually writing a piece um, for our African edition that did a season preview, and I, I had to do some words for it yesterday. And I actually didn't realise, you know, Shame on me, but I didn't realise that was his best goal scoring season since that seventeen eighteen last last year. You know, he scored thirty one goals in all competitions. You think it's just staggering, really. Yeah. And and I wouldn't. I knew he played well last season, but it wasn't like one of them where it didn't feel like Salah scored thirty one goals or yeah. like that he that he you know he, he did everything. So everything that he's done, I think it was always, you know, it will be a tricky, not a tricky one, but it will be a, a more. A less straightforward one, I think, than Allison and, and Fabinho, who would have come in probably on lower wages to start with, yeah. and then obviously um, will be getting a, a significant rise. Um, I mean, Salah's going to be the most expensive, uh, most well-paid player in Liverpool's history when, yeah. when this is all said and done, and rightly, I think, rightly so. Yeah. Um, so I think that, I did, that just makes takes it a little bit longer. I did see an interesting point of like. Um, if you get get all these contracts boxed, here's a good one for you. So that when you bring someone in amazing and he's one more, you've already sorted the contracts out for these lads, yeah, so they yeah. can't be turning around and going, yeah. "Hang on, you want? Yeah, well, I, I want more money." It is going to be someone amazing if you if you bring someone in on more than Salah. I think uh, this summer, unfortunately, I don't I don't necessarily see that that um, being the case. But yeah, I, I, yeah. But maybe I imagine Mr. Salah and his agent might be a bit more smarter than that and said, you know what, should we just wait until his window shuts? Yeah. And then we'll 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 know we are at the top end. Yeah. I, mean, I think there was a player, I'm not sure who it was. I was listening to a podcast recently about it and he said that he had it in his contract that he had to be one of the top three earners of the club. I'm and pretty said, sure that's how WCW did their contracts yeah. in wrestling in the 90s. Really? But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, come on, come on, go make a sign and make a sign and go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, be yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you want to do, yeah. do you want to come and play for us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Ask for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, definitely, uh, definitely something to keep an eye on, uh, particularly on the Salah front. Uh, in terms of potential um, incomings, then the, the one that's been linked the most this week. Um, Bournemouth winger Arnold Danjuma. Yeah. It's a random one, isn't it? We've seen a couple of these lately. Yeah. I, I don't know whether this feels like major uh, reaching. A little bit. I mean, I, I think the story is more that Villarreal are, are interested in them, but, he, it, but by way of the, the marker story, I think Liverpool's name come up that they're among a, a number of Premier League clubs that have looked. It, it's, it's a funny one because, you know, it won't get any pulses recent. I know that. I mean, I can only imagine what the comments are like here in terms of Tanji, you know, Arno Tanji for, for Liverpool. But for, I, things stick in your mind. And I, I did an interview with Harry Redknapp before the um, the League Cup final. So he, did, he was doing some corporate thing and ended up having a chat. And I was, he, he was very um, 
very sound and it's good to talk to. I just ended up having a chat while we were waiting to 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 to, to do the interview about Bournemouth because he's on he's he's a, like an advisor there. And I was asking him, I said, "Oh, do you think Bournemouth will go up?" And he said, "Oh, he said, you know, Will Gates doing this and he's doing that." He said, "Got a lad there, and Dan Juma." He said, "Oh, he's a Premier League player. He's so, you know Harry Redknapp, terrific, terrific, top player, top player, you know." But he was talking about him in that England. That was Darren Farley doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah let's not let's not let's not start that show. Uh, I, I don't think I've got enough to back it up. But um, he was talking about him, and I hadn't really. I, I knew they'd signed him when he was in the Premier League, and I sort of didn't really know too much about him. I had a look, and he was he was in good form. You know, play. He's, he's made his debut for for the, the Netherlands um, senior squad. I think he's played a couple of times. And I looked. I watched. I remember watching the two playoff games. They, they scored in both legs of the playoff against Brentford. He scored scored the winner in the first leg, and then he. He put them two 0 up in the second, and then he collapsed. The other man sent off, and he did look a good player. He's quick, and he, you know, he, nice technique, and he, you know, he had a, a way about him. And I thought, oh yeah, he, you know, Redknapp, Redknapp. You know, if he was managing a club, I'd have sort of had money on Redknapp getting him in the summer. <laughs> but um, uh, I wouldn't have said Liverpool. Oh, you know, you don't look at him and say really? straight up from Liverpool. He scored seventeen goals last season in the oh, championship, yeah. so he's one of the few players in the championship you could say. You know, you look at some of the players who are probably going to move on. I mean, Wendy has moved on, hasn't he? Um, Adam Armstrong's been linked quite quite strongly. I think he scored a fair few goals last year. Campwell, Ismail Assar at Watford. Don't, he's he's probably in that bracket of players that you think, okay, yeah, he's probably proven that he's he's good enough to go and play in the Premier League. Haven't done it in the Championship, but I just Premier League yeah. is one thing. Liverpool, I think, is another. The, the, this is the this is the awkward dynamic of when you're looking to buy a player for the front three for Liverpool. Is that what age are you buying them at? Yeah. And, and if you're buying them under the age of 21, how are you ever going to get the games for them yeah. to get them to the level you need them to, yeah. to be at? You know, that that that's a real because like we've already got Harvey Elliott, cheap yeah. conundrum. He's, he's older than that, isn't he? Is he? I'm oh, sorry, you right. You know what he might. He might he yeah, might. I think he's is he 24? Okay, I think Dan sorry, yeah. I think I, I might be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us in the comments. Yeah. Um, but I think he's 24. But at the same time, it's it's such a huge leap for him. I think that the quoted figure was sort of up towards 20 million. And I saw a few people joking, sort of saying, you know, Liverpool probably should give Bournemouth 30 for everything they've done for us in the past. And that, you know, th those kinds of things. Michael and, Edwards' phone rings. Yeah. And it's like, the day has come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The time has come for you to be I've been waiting for you, Mr. Edwards. Yeah. <laughs> you want this guy. But look, you know, it, in terms of. In terms of ability and in terms of sort of what I've seen of him, looks looks a, a good player, and I think he'll play in the Premier League or he could play in the Premier League. I think it's a world of difference between scoring 17 goals for Bournemouth that, that are in the playoffs to coming to Liverpool and, and living under that kind of pressure. So, I, and the story as well doesn't really it doesn't it doesn't get strike me as one where you think oh you know like that that that's one to keep an eye. On. I think it's I think maybe. What what's given the story legs is the fact that it's a bit of an unknown name and yeah. and, and sort of people think well where would that come from but I, I, the story seems to be a Spanish story there we're seeing a lot of whenever you look at like the the, the Echoes Live blog on this stuff it is always brilliant for it of X as cited by X yeah. and that normal yeah. it's normally like Don Ballon and yeah, Mundo Deportivo yeah, yeah. and there's th these familiar names that you only become aware of in transfer yeah. windows who are very keen to add. Yeah. You add one more name onto your rumour and all of a sudden... Yeah. You, you, you I, 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 I've, I have trouble a little bit sometimes with goal when they do, we do these... Um, we do a series called Next Gen, NXGN, where it's young players and... And I get why they do it, and I get that they sort of have to do it. And there's sort of two ways of selling a, a young player's prospect. It's either he's the next X, or he's been linked with X. And, I, and the amount that I get that a Liverpool and Manchester United linked. So it, And it's a player I've never heard of. So there was one um, recently, I have heard of this player, but it was Carney Chuck one week out of, of Villa, who, who played really well in the Youth Cup final. And when it, when it went out, that the, the headline was Liverpool linked Chuck one week out. You know, ready to become Villa's next star. So, when was he linked with Liverpool? So you look and it's like, well, he was linked with Liverpool in the most vague as possible term. But it, it there, there are that sort of, and it's very easy to link a club with Liverpool, Manchester United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City, really, because you know they have scouts everywhere. So you can pretty much say, well, yeah, Liverpool had a scout at his, his, his most recent yeah. under 18s game, or you know they they sent a scout to watch him play for England youth team or whatever. So. You have to be aware of those kind of things, and I think the other thing that that you, you mentioned there, and you know, this isn't specific to the Echo in the slightest. It's not specific to anyone, but there are, there is this cycle of the Express report marker 
who are reporting the mirror, who are reporting Calcio Mercato, yeah. and, and it, it yeah. does it does feel like this is a vortex of sort of like wait, like if you actually I've seen people do threads on it. I think there's a guy on Twitter called Colin Miller. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen him, but he, he, he's got a, a sort of pinned thread where he says this is the story. This is this sort of an evolution of a transfer rumor, and it ends up on like the club. I think it's Chelsea. Their official sort of rumor mill page, and it said it's literally just made up by someone on Twitter, but it's picked up by here to there to there to there. So it does it does perpetuate this cycle and news now and places like that really really sort of you know um, don't help that. I'm not saying that they're doing anything wrong, but they 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 sort of they help perpetuate that. It's it's so it's clearly obvious, isn't it? When something's actually happening, it's it's obvious, and when it's not, and as we said, it's, it's quite there's bits there's some bits and pieces. Well, we had some questions. We'll we'll do, I want to talk about Regan in a second, but we had a couple of super chats in while we were doing it. Um, Connor McMullen, um, thank you so much, Connor says. Uh, when you see all the superstars coming into the prem, it worries me. Then I remember how unreal our team is. Although I still <laughs> think we need a striker. And you know, I'm, I'm made up. He said that I was on the car and driving up here. And I was thinking about you know, I don't I don't rehearse, but you sort of think, well, what what sort of points do I, I really want to make? And I, I I think it's an important point to make that you can have both of these things. So I feel like sometimes a lot I end up moaning about the negativity of people on social media about transfers. I think it's I think it's important to remember that you can have that desire for a new sign and and I I, I share a lot of the people that I think they do need the midfield and I think they do probably need the forward as well, ideally. But you can also coexist in a world where you think, do you know what? Even if they don't get them, I still think they can win the league. Like yeah. I still think if they have a good run at it and a bit of luck and get off to a good start, I still think this squad and this team can win the league. And he's right. You know, I was what one of the things I was thinking on the way up was what, what would be my team for Norwich, and I sort of went through and I was like, yeah, probably probably Van Dyke maybe on the bench just to start with, and then ease him back in. Henderson probably don't think he'll have played enough to, to start. Um, and he's like. <sighs> Not a bad side though, is it? You know, you think like, yeah, yeah, it should win. It should win most games it plays, and yeah. that's not even full strength. Thiago's are probably another one not gonna, maybe not gonna start the season. Which, it's, and I think once the football comes, I think as long as the, as long as the results aren't, no, because aren't bad, I think that will that will sort of spread that feeling of optimism. Yeah, well, it's just one of those things because there was no end of season like jubilation yeah. because we finished third yeah. how how like how boring was that mm. after all the shit they yeah, went through yeah, yeah. to not even have to win on the you know what I mean yeah, like yeah, scraping yeah. well Alisson's some... goal didn't matter yeah. <laughs> like, I know, I know, I, I, it did of course it yeah, did yeah, yeah. but Alisson, Alisson didn't need to score that yeah. either. Like, but it, and, how's that happened and because there isn't that and of course but there's all the fears and there's all the injuries and there's all the bits and pieces around that there's just a low lying yeah. fear but for me again you might I made a point earlier I was asked about it and I said well look Liverpool didn't play their best 11 for a single minute of football mm. last season yeah. I mean you can debate what your best 11 is but yeah, the closest yeah, yeah. we came was the Merseyside derby yeah, and Adrian was in goal and Adrian was yeah. in goal Adrian was in goal. Mm. Um, and leave, leave, what can I just say, leave Adrian alone, by the way, on social media. Oh. He's clearly just a nice fella. Oh. Sorry that you don't think he's boss. Um, sorry, two years, it's been two years, years today since he signed. But then, you know what? It's horrible. <laughs> it's like, Liverpool put that out and I thought, oh. oh I know, yeah. you but then you think, well, the alternative is you just ignore him. And, yeah. and he's like, well, I signed two years ago today. Why haven't you put a tweet out about me? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, again, look at, that look at that team that we've got. If uh, To finish third, to lose all those games at Anfield in that run, as well in, in, in at the turn of the year, and just 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 to have a chance of having maybe like the back five, the back five, and whoever you want to play alongside Virgil Van Dijk to maybe have Fabinho, Henderson, and Thiago, and the front three, the front or three. or even Jotter in there if you yeah, want yeah. to have a chance of seeing them play more than a handful of games yeah, this yeah. season. And that that you're still, right. Liverpool still finished above the European champions last season. They they, they finished above yeah. Chelsea. You know, for all the all the quality Chelsea have bought and all the quality they have, Liverpool. Finished above them in the Premier League last season with everything that went on in their their, their season. So yeah. I think there's there's still plenty plenty to be optimistic about. Even though I accept no, that you know can, you, you can still want more. I've I've been optimistic about Liverpool teams. It's it's just it's, it's under under a greater microscope now because people have got FSG as a as a as a touch point for it to like sum up all their feelings and thoughts and all that. But I've been optimistic about Liverpool winning league titles with much worse squads oh, than they've yeah, got now. Yeah, yeah. Much. Most definitely. Which, and this one's actually done it. <laughs> which is <laughs> yeah. which is the major yeah. difference between yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah. So at least when I go, I know that they all know how to do it. And that was the biggest failing that we've had for yeah. years is that we had too many players who had no idea how yeah, to win yeah, the league. Yeah. They all know how to do it now, which is the biggest thing. Uh, right, we, we did say we talked about Divock Origi. We actually had a super chat coming about it from Alvin and I do uh, who says, Do you think the club are being realistic, asking twenty million for Divock Origi. Uh, not sure they will get that, and we need to shift him to get someone new in. Uh, again, 
I'm not sure. We do need to we do need to shift them for a variety of reasons. But I was thinking this again to the to the point. We've got now the best in Salah, Firmino, Mane, and Jota. You've got not just the best front three in world football and has been for a number of years there or thereabouts. Yeah. You've added another lad who's potentially... So you've got a 30-goal-a-season forward. Yeah, yeah. You've got a 20-goal-a-season yeah. forward. You've got potentially in Jota the 15 to yeah, 20. Yeah. And you've got Firmino, who's Firmino, who yeah, does his yeah. bits. And you've then got, whether you like Diva or not, you've got a lad who you yeah. can throw into mad games and he'll yeah, score goals yeah, yeah. for you. Um, and on top of all the other bits and pieces... So the Diva Carrie stuff's awkward. I yeah. think he's worth more than what we're gonna get for him. I, I I I think that I think he's worth more to Liverpool than he's worth to who buy, whoever buys him. That, that's the way I would, would put it. So you might say if I'm if I'm Newcastle and I'm looking around and I'm saying right, I want a striker. I'm not I'm not linking Diva Carrie to Newcastle. I'm just thinking of a, a team that would potentially be looking for a striker this summer. Right, twenty million pound. I can get. Let me let, let me just throw in a name. Ivan Tony. Let's just say you can get him from Brentford. I'm, again, I'm just, I'm just sort of. These, these are just. You can replace these with anyone. You think pff, twenty? Yeah, twenty million's a fair price. Scored X amount of goals last season. You know, he's, he's got the hunger. He's not done it in the Premier League, but he's got that hunger. You know, plays a lot of football. Yeah, you'd say that. And then you go, Divock, Divock Origi only scored once last season, and that was against Lincoln or you know whatever it was. You know. I barely started the game for two years. Yeah, he always scored that goal in the championship. But you can't twenty million. But then you sort of say, well, what what's he worth to Liverpool? What he's worth is they know he can he can do it off the bench. They know he can play left or or centre if they need him to, and he needs to rest. Mane or Mane's injured or at the African Nations. He's not on massive wages. He's not a particularly controversial character who's going to be in the papers and going on international duty with Belgium and saying. I've been treated like a dog by Jurgen Klopp, and I, you know, I, I, I can't believe it. He's not. He's a good trainer. He's a, a, a decent teammate. He seems to be quite popular. I mean, I've, I've, I, they call him laid back Divock, don't they? In, in the sense of, you know, I think he just people laugh at him because he's just sort of on a different planet sometimes. But he's ingratiated. He knows full well how the team plays uh, and trains, and that's that's hard to replace. That's hard to replace. When you, like you say, whoever's coming in is gonna have to. Whoever's gonna come in, if you said to someone, "Do you want to sign for Liverpool? You can be our new Divock Origi." I think people would go, "No, you're right. Like, I'd like to play if you yeah. if, if you can." Pay so how do you how season. do you sell that to someone? You don't have to sell that to Divock Origi. Maybe you do this summer. Maybe maybe that's maybe that's the, the the game changer that you maybe maybe sometime at some point you are gonna have to say to Divock. Well, this is that's it. Like it all, unpick what you want to do. The only way you should be replacing Divock Origi is with someone who's better than the fit than the fit what you've got in the first eleven. Because you're right, you can't replace replacing mm. squad players is how you undercut yeah, the yeah. quality of your squad. Exactly. You buy squad players. You buy squad players. Your team suffers. You know, you end up with you end up with a lot of good, and good this, subs. Well, this is the thing. We're going to talk Shakiri on on inside extra over on the redmantv.com of course um, because I think it's interesting we have got one more super chat which I'll get to in a second but him Origi and Shakiri are the, where the poses are I get it and I agree by the way 100% with that statement yeah. we do need to move them on really I think so because well. we've, we've gotten the most we're ever likely to get out of either of those lads to be honest neither of them fit our style of play um, and neither of them are, are versatile truly enough in the level that you yeah. you know you you they're, they're improving anything you know you're not you're He's, not going they're not going to start twenty five games for Liverpool next yeah. season in any pretty much in any circumstance there's no environment in which if they get a start because one of the other first team players is injured that that player doesn't come straight back yeah, and yeah, forth yeah. and when they're yeah. fit and that's the barometer I think that's, I think. that's a good point yeah. but also to your point in both Shakiri and Origi how he how, how he can't I, they, 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 I think they played they probably played about 500 minutes ish yeah and i think you're looking season. i think liverpool probably a year or two ago might have thought Rian Brewster could come and be Divock Origi's sort of yeah. he'd supersede them and he yeah. didn't you know he, and and he didn't have the patience to 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 wait to do that and that's not a criticism of, of Brewster he wanted and it was 24 million pounds yeah he wasn't willing to sort of say yeah i'll play i'll play three three League games and, and playing the, the Carabao Cup when we get beaten, and I'll, yeah, I'll play 23s football or whatever. He didn't want want to do that, and not many players would want to do that. Divock Origi, for the last couple of years in particular, has been willing to do that, and as, yeah. and as much as his performances have dropped off since you know that incredible high of of Madrid, I, I, I don't think his attitude has, and I don't think his application have, and, and I don't think he'd have lasted as long as he has if, if it did. So you know. 
when you talk about what he's worth, he's only he's only worth what what our team's willing to pay and what yeah. our club's willing to sell for. Yeah, no, this is a shame because I, I you look at it. If we're talking Liverpool, don't want to accept ten, they want twenty. Then you know we're in a situation. We had this conversation the other week about Harry Wilson, didn't yeah. we? You know, and he, you know you, you might get somewhere between yeah, yeah. twelve and fifteen for him ultimately. And I, I look at it and go, okay, that's fair. I'm amazed no one's been there have been so. more I, takers for the I think so as well. I th- I wonder whether it's a bit of a perception that. People think he's maybe he's, he likes the quiet life a bit too much, and maybe maybe people think he doesn't have the he doesn't have that desire to mm. to come and be a main man. But we'll probably never we'll never know until he does, I suppose. Yeah. But I think I think he's more than good enough to start for a lot of Premier League clubs. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Utkash Gupta says uh, Bobby getting worse each season. We need a striker. I mean, <sighs> well, he had a bad season. Yeah, he had a bad season, um, but ended and, it really well. Yeah, yeah, and and every time Liverpool played well, Bobby. Bobby was right in the centre of it, yeah. you know. None more so, I don't think, than the Manchester United game towards the back end of the season. And you think of the Palace game before Christmas. But the, the, the key is, I think, it's not being as reliant on him because obviously, and I think you have to you have to factor in the fact as well that Bobby's not got the physical gifts of the other two in terms of his speed. So Sadio and and Mo can have a a game where they don't get the better of the defender often, but. The pace gets them in for for one chance, or the, or they they get into the right position. Bobby, it's basically you know if things aren't if it isn't his day, there's not really anything to get him out of that you know unless he unless he scores. Um, so I think you have to Liverpool have to get better at, at avoiding that trap of Firmino being shut down and that affecting the way that they play. But I think you also have to factor in that. Last season, not a real barometer of anyone's form, in my in my opinion. I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can look at that, and I mean good and bad. I don't think you can look at that and say, for example, well, Jack Grealish is going to absolutely rip it off at Manchester City because I think when he, yeah, his best his best work has come in empty stadiums and sort of mm-hmm. a, a different type of football. Same as I think with Firmino, while there are legitimate concerns, I think you can't say that his decline is terminal based on a year without support. I, it's, it, yeah, no, I agree on that. And I think if there's anyone, particularly about the physical gifts, who's who, who just needed a break, yeah, Roberto Firmino, who's yeah. done it all, who's done all the same amount of games and more that the other lads have done. Yeah, but let's face it, he's just not. He's yeah. not like he's not built in the same way as they are, and yeah. he is so he was so integral to. So much of everything that Liverpool do, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'd, like again, I don't disagree that Liverpool need yeah, a striker. I think, and I think you might, I think he might be in and out of the side a bit more this season with Jota and and whatever else um, is available at that time. But I, yeah, I like we saying about Allison, we saying about Fabinho. You're gonna to have to spend an awful lot of money to, to get a player more important to Liverpool than Roberto Firmino. Yeah, we got a, another super chat from David Woodward here saying, "Why is everyone saying titleless cities because of their signings? We beat them when they had a younger, better squad. Silver KDB before injuries, Aguero, and that's the, that, that's the interesting point on in all this. Is he dead right? People do this every window. Yeah. There's a reason why Everton think they win transfer windows every every season because <laughs> they look at the names and yeah. they go buying this player in guarantees X Y Z. It doesn't. Odds are, like, because let's be honest, if you plug a Harry Kane into a Man City, psh, it stands to reason. Yeah. But there is also like they're never going to get likely to get more points than they've got they've had in a couple of seasons prior to prior yeah. to this one. Like, you can't get. There's not much more better you do, can do, be. Do you, do you haven't won the Champions League. You know that's how hard it is to 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 do what what they're trying to do, and they've had all they've always had the best team really. It, probably buying the season before last, I think would have that would have been a great final. But I, I think City should have won the Champions League that season. They got beat by Leon. You look at the season Liverpool got to the final. City should have won the Champions League that year. There that was a hundred point season. Liverpool done them over two legs in the in the quarters. Uh, Monaco I think beat them a se- another season. Tottenham knocked them out. You know. The names doesn't don't mean that they're gonna do it. And you're right, like I mean, what 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 did it take for City for Liverpool to win the league by what was it, eighteen, nineteen points? City lost Laporte. They, no, that was that was the sort of what was held up, wasn't it? And he didn't yeah. replace company. Now Aguero's gone, Silva's gone, obviously, company's gone. You know, what what happened De Bruyne's had a lot of injuries the last few couple of years. They've got an awful lot of attacking players, but they're all, they're gonna have to offload some of them if they get obviously if they get what they, they want. I think Grealish will probably sign today, but they, mm-hmm. they want Kane as well. They're gonna to have to offload probably Sterling, Mares, good players. You know they did. Bernardo I, Silva. If Liverpool were selling Raheem Sterling, Riyad Mahrez, and Bernardo Silva this summer, maybe Gabriel Jesus and Aguero had retired. 
what do you think? What do you think Liverpool fans would be saying? I don't. I think they'd be excited about Grealish and Kane, but I think they'd be saying, "God, we're going to miss these players. Yeah, we're, going, yeah. we're really going to miss the." And we already had a doubt over the over the sort of strength of the midfield because of what happened in the Champions League final, and you know, yeah. like probably do we need a bit more steel in that regard? Do we put maybe lead the left back? You know, there's a, there's. There's a few questions at City. I think they are obviously favourites for the title, yeah, and so they and should be. I'm cool with that. Like, yeah. I'm absolutely fine with going City. Or City yeah, favourites yeah. for everything. Cool. I think you're going to be pretty happy with doing that. I mean, you're going to love the Ivan Drago, Rocky Balboa um, comparison. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he digs that out before the season. So, oh, you know, well, they've bought Crane and Grealish. What can we do with that? Yeah. But I think that's that's fuel for, for the club like Liverpool. And yeah. maybe even, you know, seeing Manchester United doing what they're doing, maybe Chelsea if they buy Lukaku or... It's know, worth reminding, though, on the City stuff, to, to, to the point as well, as a, as a tangential point to what we've been talking about with Liverpool, they, one of the reasons City was so successful is that they kept all the best players. Yeah, yeah. And then now, of course, they just it's just stupid. They're financially, financially don't yeah. done all the things in between. They've never really been too concerned about how they spend and the mask has slipped off big time this summer, finally. You know, yeah. no more of the, well, we don't break transfer records yeah, yeah, yeah. when they go and buy four fifty million pound players instead. But you know, they you know, the reason was they kept Fernandinho, they kept yeah, David yeah. Silva, they kept Aguero, they kept them, they ran all yeah, these lads yeah, through yeah. and got everything they could get out of them, and that's what Liverpool are at. And all our best players are still well in well in the prime, so don't worry too much about it. <laughs> the point on that. Um but City probably will win the title. Just how it works. <laughs> look, they should. They should. That's all that's all you'd say, isn't it? Yeah. But you know, they should have won it probably the year Liverpool won it. Yeah, and he didn't. Absolutely. There you go. Um, people asking, anything to keep an eye on transfer wise? <laughs> um, well, nothing other than what we've discussed, really. I mean, look, there's time to go. I mean, it, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, Danny Ings came out of nowhere, didn't it, to Villa this week? Yeah. And I think a lot of people have been talking about that once the green, that once the dominoes start falling, then they, then you do see moves. Then you do see, you know, Ben White's gone from Brighton. So what are they going to do? Then you might see players maybe that you don't expect to, to move move. There might be some in the Liverpool mix, you know, I think Matt Phillips or someone like that, or Nico Williams or Origi, Shakiri. They're all they're all sort of spinning plates, if you like. And maybe once 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 opportunities come up there, then that's when things start to move. But I think that's there's still plenty. I mean, the window obviously shuts at the end of the month. It, it, it was what for a season or two? Was it even two seasons? One certainly one. Start shutting before the start of the new season, and that created its own issue. With obviously, Coutinho was 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 one of those, wasn't it? I think there'll still be plenty happening. I think lots is going to happen in the Premier League over the next few few weeks. I I can't believe Liverpool will get to the end of the, the window and only have bought Canate. I, I still think there's something to come. Um, but. I've been wrong before. <laughs> plenty, <laughs> plenty of times. They love to, they love to prove us wrong, and yeah, they love to make us absolutely. look like fools. Um, so, right, okay, yeah, we're going to be doing uh, transfer insights extra over on the RedmenTV.com. So, if you want to know a little bit more uh, about the new deal for Trent Alexander Arnold, which is massive, um, the future of Ben Davies, I just, I, which I find fascinating. This whole, this, it's just him, fascinating human, fascinating situation, and, and a bit more on Jaden Shakiri as well. Uh, do go over and subscribe to the RedmenTV.com com and get that show over there uh, as well yes uh, and just last mention uh, we mentioned it when I was here before my holiday but they're now available for pre-order the Hendo 10 years of red books we've got boxes and boxes of them they're ready to start shipping it's just phenomenal it's the biggest best thing we've ever done and uh, it gives you a wonderful insight into Jordan Henderson's career from people who were alongside him friends family coaches managers brilliant high definition photo stories and just it's just it's just boss if you really like Jordan Henderson then get it it's on redmanmerch.com right now right Neil thank you um, no problem insights extras to come Hope to see you guys over there if not back for another one next week